Hello and thank you for joining me again on Run Level Zero. Today we're going to take a look at Zorn OS 8 Core released on January 27th, 2014. I'd like to take a moment and dedicate this video to my good friend Corey. Corey has been using Zorn OS faithfully for the last couple of years and every time I talk to him he has nothing but great things to say about Zorn and his experiences in the Zorn OS. Zorn is, is one of my favorite Linux distributions. Whenever someone asks me what Linux distribution I would recommend to a new Linux user, you know, I, I do have a list of five distros that I recommend and maybe I'll do a video on those in the near future but always consistently at the top of that list is Zorin OS. Zorin is based on Ubuntu. This one is based on Ubuntu 13.10 and it features a highly customized GNOME desktop. They've gone out of their way to select a core set of applications that are going to meet the average Windows users daily needs and we're going to get into that core uh, application set in a few minutes but they've also done an excellent job at creating a desktop interface that is pleasing to the eye and is familiar enough to a Linux or to a Windows user rather that they won't be scared off many of the Linux desktop environments can be a bit foreign to what an average Windows, us Windows user would be used to and it can be overwhelming when you're throwing somebody into a new uh, a new desktop environment into a new operating system altogether you know to, to really just take them throw them in the deep end and say swim that that that's really a bit much to ask of your average Windows user so Zorn has created an interface that will really ease them into it and allow them to become comfortable operating in Linux and then perhaps branch out and, and move into to other environments and experiment. At the same time, Zorin pr provides, through Compass, they provide a lot of eye candy, a lot of visual effect in their desktop that really shows off what you can accomplish in Linux. So, Zorin's been out for a while, so what are a few of the changes in this Zorin OS 8? Looking at their blog, they say they've introduced a myriad of changes in Zorn OS, including updated software, improvements to the user interface, and entirely new software. Zorn OS 8 includes a simpler, more beautiful music player app, uh, the Empathy Instant Messaging Client, as well as the Zorn Theme Changer. This is one of the things you're going to see in Zorn, is that they have actually created several custom interfaces that make handling some administrative tasks easy. So I, I really appreciate when a distribution goes out of the way to create their own custom applications. It, it really shows that they're dedicated and that they are capable uh, programmers. Mm -hmm. So they have created a beautiful new dark theme in complement to a new and improved light theme. And says we have created this simple app to switch between the two quickly and easily. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and show you Zorn OS 8. Beautiful log on screen. There is a guest edition that's available. So if you have Zorn OS 8 installed on your system and you want to say you have house guests or you have kids and you want to let them use a computer but you want to limit what they can do, you can let them log in to the guest session and they will have very restricted access to the file system and they cannot have they, they can't have any administrative access at all. So whatever they do in this guest session, it'll go away when whenever they log out. So it'll reset itself. So let's go back down. We're going to log in. login is very fast there is a nice 
low, unobtrusive startup sound that I like. I, I don't like a lot of dings, bells, and whistles in my in my system, but I do appreciate some system notifications. Zorn does a good job at offering those without letting them be obtrusive. So looking at the Zorn OS 8 desktop, it is a beautiful, it, it's, this is the light theme, it's the theme by default, but we have a dark background running by default, so it's going to be very easy on the eyes. That's going to be really important if you do a lot of computing. If, if you spend a lot of time on your computer, those really bright themes can can get kind of harsh. So a darker theme tends to be a little bit easier to work with. We do have a traditional desktop layout. And what I mean by traditional desktop layout is you have one desktop with maybe a couple of icons. Here we have the home and the trash. One panel across the bottom. And in the lower left hand corner is the application menu. So this is what I consider a traditional desktop layout. It's very similar to what Windows offers and it's going to be familiar to a new user. Now this is a modified GNOME 3 uh, shell and this panel is brought to you courtesy of AWN. It's the Avant Window Navigator. And If we go down and right click and hit about. Now this is not a traditional AWN this is highly customized by Zorn to provide this Zorn desktop environment. Their menu is a modified version of GNO menu. And we're going to get back into that in just a moment. So on this desktop we have access to the home folder and when you pull it open you'll find that it's very snappy and responsive. Now this is running in VirtualBox with two gigabytes of RAM and two dedicated processors and what you're going to notice is there are some great snappy visual effects these visual effects are brought to us courtesy of Compass now one of the things that really impressed me with this distribution this is the first Linux distribution that I have had full Compass visual effects in a virtual box and we're going to take a look at a couple of those effects here in just a moment but most of the time things like the compass cube won't run inside of a virtual but it does run here now it that even ran before I installed the guest editions so that was impressive enough speaking of the guest editions I've seen where other users have had issues installing the guest editions just as a note I didn't have any problems at all I loaded up the guest editions disk uh, clicked run and it just ran so everything installed for me with no problem at all there is a beautiful theme uh, for the icons here and everything is going to follow this nice uh, blue and gray theming it's very consistent there's been a lot of polish on this system they've paid great attention to detail which I appreciate I like consistency in my Linux distributions and and they have it in spades here so let's take a look at a couple of other desktop effects the compass cube is enabled so if we hit control alt and button one you see we get a nice fade out to this compass cube and the reflections and everything is just set up and, and configured nicely the end caps are configured so it just looks really nice very well polished like I said, th this is the first time I've ha ever had that work properly without any tearing uh, in, a, in a virtual environment, especially just running 2 gig of RAM. This is a really, th this is going to function just fine on older systems. Again, 2 gigs of RAM, two, de two processors, no problem. So let's close that out, nice fade out. Looking down at the panel, and the lower right hand corner is your session manager. Here you can uh, get some about some help for Zorn OS. You can access the system settings panel. You can lock or switch user, log out, suspend, restart, shut down right here in the corner. Moving on we have our clock and calendar, volume control with integrated access to the music player. The music player is noise which is uh, ported over from elementary OS and you also get to your sound settings 
battery monitor if applicable. You have uh, integration with your chat right here, network monitor, as well as this, this is the uh, char character map manager for your, your keyboard. And this was introduced in Ubuntu 13.10, and it's I'm glad that they put this in here. So if you ha if you are multilingual, if you do uh, say email or, or search in another language other than English, uh, you, you can easily change your keyboard settings right here from this from this menu. So I'm, I'm glad they put that in there. Open applications will be displayed in the central portion of the panel. And over on the left hand side you have quick access to your music player. It is it's a nice slim lightweight functional music player. All of your codecs and uh, and drivers have been pre-installed in Zorn OS so you don't have to worry about getting stuff like Java and, and all of your multimedia codecs running. It's all been done for you. You also have access to Nautilus which is your file manager. We just took a look at that and Chrome is the default web browser. I like Chrome. Chrome is my web browser of choice, but we're going to see in a moment that you're not limited to just having Chrome. So, moving on to this Zorn menu. Again, this is a customized version of the GNOME menu, and its, it's layout is going to be very similar to Windows 7 in the default session you're not going to find a Linux distribution that looks exactly like Windows and that's a good thing because Linux is not Windows but Zorin has created a system here especially with this menu layout that it's going to be easy and comfortable for a Windows user or a convert coming over from Windows to, to find their way around and not get lost not get frustrated so I really appreciate the detail that they've that they've shown here. Starting on the right hand side there are shortcuts to your most commonly used folder. Your home folder, your documents, pictures, and you can see as I'm mousing over that the icon is changing here. Uh, music, videos, you have shortcut to your recent items, your computer, which if you click that that'll take you to the root of your file system, uh, your network drives, you can connect universal access, system settings, and help. Your session manager is down at the bottom where you can choose to log out or you can power off or reboot your system. In typical Linux fashion your applications are categorized by their function so if you go into accessories we have an archive manager, calculator, character map, disk manager, file manager, fonts, screenshot utility, a file search utility, shortcut to your terminal, and your text editor. Let's take a look. Gedit is the text editor of choice. Moving into games, there are a couple of choices here. You have uh, Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, Quadrupestle, which is a Tetris clone, and Sudoku for you intellectual types out there. Under Internet, you have a desktop sharing application, Empathy Instant Messenger, Google Chrome, Remote Desktop Client, Thunderbird for email. And this is what I was talking about, you not being locked into just Google Chrome. This is Zorn Web Browser Manager is one of those applications that Zorn has customized to help make managing your system easy. Using Zorn Web Browser Manager you can see that Google Chrome is installed, but if you would like, you can install Firefox, Opera, or Midori, and you can also set, uh, you can uninstall any of them, and you can set which one is your default web browser right from this interface. So it just makes life a little bit easier. Moving on, we have Office, and as you can see, let me back up for just a moment. In each of these categories, we're not bloated. There is a nice selection of core applications that have been carefully selected. It's going to fulfill the average desktop user's needs and they're going to be compatible with the Microsoft Office uh, equivalents. So under Office we have the entire LibreOffice suite which is compatible 
with Microsoft Office file formats. So you're not going to be missing anything. So if you're a college student, don't worry about it. You can do your Word documents, you can do your PowerPoint presentations, your Excel uh, spreadsheets, all right from the LibreOffice suite. Moving on to sound and video, Brassero Disk Burner, which is a very user-friendly disk burning utility, Cheese Webcam Booth, Music once again, uh, Open Shot Video Editor, there's a sound recorder and your video player right here. And again, all the codecs are already installed. Moving on to System Tools, you have a couple of sub-menus at the top here, Administration and Preferences. But first we're going to take a look. We have a Disk Usage Analyzer, Help Humanity, which is a uh, community. Uh, let's open that up. The Zorn World Community Grid Program contributes your unused computing power to help scientists solve some of the world's most pressing problems, including developing cures for cancer and HIV AIDS and other projects to help humanity. The program will only contribute spare computing resources and won't negatively affect your computer's performance or battery life. This is not installed by default. You have to this is an opt-in program. But what this does is it allows your computer's spare processing, like when your computer is idle or when you're just surfing the web and you're not using a lot of your resources, this will dedicate some of your resources in the background to uh, distributed computing, distributed processing. So if they're trying to crunch large numbers, they basically, this is like a poor man's supercomputer where they distribute the processing across all the participants in the world and you can actually help uh, with some of these community projects. So that's, you know, that's pretty cool. But again, it's opt-in. So if you don't want it, don't worry about it. Let's get back to it. System tools. Uh, under power, you have power statistics, a system log, system monitor. Let's take a peek at that and see what our resources are running at. This is a GNOME 3 desktop well, highly modified, that's running on 405 megs of RAM. It's only pulling about you know, between 10 and 20 percent of my processor. That is really slim. That is competitive with most lightweight uh, district, well, most midstream, we'll say, uh, desktop environments out there. Let's see, getting back to it, we have the Zorin Look Changer. This is a neat little application. You have three. Now, that we are looking at the Zorin OS Core. There is an Ultimate Edition that you have to pay about 10 bucks to get access to. And with that uh, Zorin OS Ultimate, you have about twice as many themes as, you, as uh, are available here. But uh, the, the difference between Core and Ultimate, since I brought it up, the ultimate edition is basically how Zorin keeps on producing their product. You know, it's ten dollars. It's not a lot out of pocket, especially when you consider what you get compared to other operating systems that you have to buy. I mean, ten bucks is really nothing, but that money goes to help the Zorin team cover the costs of producing this desktop. So, if you contribute, you're really guaranteeing that Zorn will be around for a long time and they'll be able to continue to bring you an excellent product. So as a thank you for contributing to them, they open up, it's, I believe it's twice as many themes. By default, you have a Windows 7, a Windows XP, and a GNOME 2 theme. With the, uh, the Ultimate Edition, I believe you get a Windows 2000 layout, a Mac OS X layout, and there's another one. I believe it may be a Unity. I could be mistaken on that. But you get a lot more. You'll also get access to Active Wallpaper, which is a, uh, it, it can be pretty fun. It's, it's actually an animated wallpaper that, that they've, again, they've created a, a custom application to help you manage that. But, yeah, this it's just a neat little tool. It helps you customize your desktop. And as always, folks, I highly support, I highly encourage you to support the distributions. Go ahead and spend the 10 bucks. You know, you won't be sorry. Try out Zorin. You'll like it. Spend the $10 and 
help them make sure that they can continue to offer their product. So getting back to it, we're going to take a look at the Zorin theme changer next. This is what we saw on the website. And again, you have your choice between Zorin Light and Zorin Dark. And when you choose Zorin Dark, you can see it'll change the theme. It does it live. You don't have to log out, log back on. And it applies fairly quickly. And now you have this nice dark theme. If you want to go back to light, no problem. Just click on light and it reapplies. Just that simple. Okay, coming back into the system menu, we'll go into the administration sub menu. You have access to Gparted Partition Editor, the Software Updater, Startup Disk Creator, Synaptic Package Manager is installed for you more advanced users if you want a finer degree of control over how your system updates or installs applications, right there. A system testing utility, and a utility to manage your Windows wireless drivers. For preferences, you can view the Activity Log Manager. The Compass Config Settings Manager, this is where you're going to manage your uh, desktop effects, and you can really play around to your heart's content here. There's a lot that you can do with it. Uh, you can set your uh, hotkeys, manage your wallpaper, that nice little desktop cube that we had, uh, wobbly windows, that's one of the first thing people like to play with is the wobbly windows. So let's go ahead and turn that on. So we just click on wobbly windows and our windows start to wobble. So you can play with this to your heart's content. And that's one of the things that I really like about Zorin is it's a good stepping stone into Linux and it can really you, you get in here and you explore and you play and you can really see what Linux has to offer if you're a new new user coming over from Windows but it's it's not scary you know it's not completely foreign it's, it's wrapped up in, in a, an environment that's going to be familiar to you so moving on you have your typical uh, control panel settings here uh, let's see, input methods, network connections, online accounts for uh, integrating your, your Google and other online accounts here. You can integrate those notifications into your system. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? You can manage your software and updates, your startup applications. The GNOME Tweak tool is installed, as well as Ubuntu One. So if you have an Ubuntu One account or you want to create an Ubuntu One account, you get five gigabytes of free online storage that you can sync between multiple computers and you can log into that right here. So let's go back. You have access again to the Zorn Look Changer, the Zorn Theme Changer. And let's take a peek at the system settings right quick while we're in over here. The system settings panel Ah, that's interesting. There we go. The system settings panel is your standard GNOME uh, settings menu. You have access to your background uh, features right here. I didn't mean to close that out. I meant to go back. That was my fault. <laughs> uh, brightness and lock features, uh, security and privacy settings, again, power manager printers, the average uh, system settings menus. While we're at it, let's take a look at the desktop backgrounds, see what we have to offer here. Looks like we only have the one installed right now. But again, you could go out online and uh, find more. I, I wish they would have included more, more backgrounds. That is one thing. Kind of disappointed to see that they only have one to offer. There was one issue that I noticed before uh, installing Guest Editions. When I was running this before I had Guest Editions installed, I snapped out to the desktop cube, and when I came back, I noticed there was a glitch with the menu. The menu was actually appearing beneath the on panel, and I've seen where other users have had uh, similar experiences. Mr. Turner, uh, Jeff Turner's Linux channel. I highly recommend him. He did a great video on uh, Zorn OS 8 as well, and he did a uh, 
a follow-on where he noticed a couple of, of problems when, when he was tweaking the, the on panel down here. Uh, he ran into that same issue, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Hopefully Zorn will release a patch that will fix that here in the near future. But since installing Guest Editions, I have not had the same issue uh, with this winding up behind the on uh, behind the on panel. So uh, maybe that's a glitch on certain systems. Again, I haven't run into it since installing Guest Editions. All in all, I'm still very impressed with Zorn OS 8. And for a new user coming over to Linux from Windows, you really can't go wrong with Zorin. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when, when I recommend Linux to a new user, I recommend Zorin. I have for years and I will continue to. They produce an excellent polished product that is stable, meets every user's day-to-day -day needs, you just can't go wrong with it. Give it a try. Download it. Let me know what you think. If you run into any bugs or issues, uh, leave them in the comments below. But more importantly, head over to Zorn and let them know about it so they can uh, release a patch to fix it. And please consider purchasing the Ultimate Edition. Uh, they can really use that help. That's, that's how these Linux distributions that are great, like Zorin, is how they can continue to operate and offer us good products for free. So, yeah, not just for Zorn, any distribution. If you use it, if you like it, show them some love, show them some support. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope to be with you soon for another video.